video I'm going to have a go at sculpting up a skull using monster clay hard. If you're a regular on my channel you'd have noticed that I've done lots and lots of robots recently um, which have of course all been hard edged modelling so I've been meaning to get back into the sculpture for quite a while so I thought having a go at a skull would be a good place to start. I had a go at doing a skull a while back for my zombie video and I thought this one came out okay although it did look a little bit cartoony so I want to try and do something that's a little bit more anatomically correct this time around. I've mentioned in some of my previous videos that I happen to have a, a real human skull here so obviously that's perfect for reference. One of the things I noticed straight away when looking at it is that this isn't actually one piece of bone. If you look at the diagram here you can actually see the skull's actually made up of lots and lots of different bones. So I want to try and do something a little bit more accurate this time around. I've been using monster clay for quite some time but I've always used the medium soft variety. They also do a soft and a hard version and I've had a box of the hard stuff sitting in the cupboard for quite a while. So to start off with I put it in the microwave at a low power just to soften it up. And that allows me to easily scoop out some handfuls to start building up a basic shape for my sculpture. Now you need to be a little bit careful with this, if you heat it up too much it can go a bit like napalm and be like liquid in the centre and you can get some quite nasty burns so you need to be careful with this. But as long as you don't leave it in there for too long you should find that this comes out quite soft and isn't too hot to handle. So having used the hard variety of monster clay for a while now, I've got to say I do actually quite like it. Um, obviously it's firmer than the medium stuff as you'd expect and I find that's quite useful because I think it does mean that there's less likelihood of you destroying details um, in your sculpture as you handle it. Obviously as you're working on a piece you need to move it about all over the place, hold it at different angles uh, and I've often had that situation where you sort of spend ages getting a particular detail right then you stick your index finger right through it. So uh, because this stuff's a little bit firmer I think there's maybe a bit less likelihood of that and I've certainly found that it stood up to handling a little bit better than the uh, other stuff. So that's certainly an immediate benefit that I've noticed. When you've made a mould of a sculpture, uh, demoulding it, i.e. getting the original sculpture back out of the mould, can sometimes lead to the sculpture being destroyed in the process, so um, using a firmer clay I think might actually help with that. It's perhaps obvious thinking about it, but skulls are as individual as faces, so there's no sort of one um, proper uh, way of doing a skull, as they can vary quite considerably. I suppose that should be obvious, because faces are all different as well, but um, it did sort of surprise me slightly having looked through various reference images. The original idea for doing a skull actually came from the introduction to uh, the TV series Westworld. Um, this shot in particular I really liked the um, look of having the skull and the muscles on one side of the face and the fully sculpted face on the other. If you've seen the show you'll have seen that there are lots of scenes of uh, technicians working in the background sculpting up faces for new hosts and um, that's the robots in the series. Um, so I just like the sort of um, the sort of pure sculptural nature of it so I'm not trying to make this look like a zombie or anything like that. I want it to be more sort of uh, figurative, sort of like an anatomy study or something like that. Um, so I've just been working on this um, here and there over the last month or so, trying to get it looking right. I'm quite pleased with how this has come out, so um, I'm going to continue with this. Like I say, it's not meant to be a zombie or anything like that. So I had even thought about casting up and maybe even cold casting it with metal powder, something like that. Up to this point this wasn't really looking quite right, it was still looking pretty cartoony to me and I realised I hadn't quite got the head tall enough. Now if you've sculpted faces before you'll know that the eyes are generally more or less in the centre of the head if you measure from the bottom to the top. So um, I'm just adding some more clay to the top here to extend the head out a bit. Another reason that I wanted to have a go doing a skull is um, if you're into monsters and creatures and all that sort of thing you do tend to see quite a lot of um, sculptures and drawings of skulls and I think um, there are quite a lot of interpretations out there, some of them not particularly accurate so I think that maybe the common perception that a lot of people think of of a skull uh, perhaps isn't quite as accurate as you might think so certainly when I've sculpted them previously they've never quite looked right, I've never quite got something that I thought personally looked realistic. I find it quite useful actually to use a scalpel to sort of cut some slightly flat planes into sculptures. It's quite a good way of getting a sort of a smooth flat area. 
although they're not precisely flat, the cheekbones are flatter than some other areas of the skull, so I found that was quite a good way of dealing with that area. Also notice the uh, far right and left side of the um, eye sockets are also made up of separate pieces of bone as well, so making sure to sculpt in a join there. I think paying attention to the genuine anatomical features of real skull is going to be of benefit in the future because this is sort of a learned process you know um, you do learn to sculpt faces and it, it comes with practice and after a while you'll find yourself doing noses much easier than you had previously simply because you've had a chance to practice them so I think the same is going to be true for doing a skull if I can get down the basic process of doing one that's going to be really useful in the future when I come to sculpt them again and again. And certainly having had a go at this now, I can see a lot of things I've been doing incorrectly previously. I've got to say actually, I've really been churning sculptures out um, at the minute. I, I don't know if it's because I've been working on sort of hard-edged robots for so long, but um, I literally have about seven or eight sculptures on the desk at the minute that I've just been working on. And it's really sort of flowing out of me at the minute, and you'll see some of my videos coming up soon um, are very, very sculptural. Um, so uh, maybe it's a good way of doing things. If you really want to be able to plough through some sculptures, maybe do some hard edge modelling or maybe some woodwork or something a bit disconnected from sculpting. Uh, so when you come back to it, suddenly there's lots of uh, sculpting energy to get out. And the nasal bone doesn't directly butt up against the eye socket, so I'm just adding some additional pieces in here. Um, the diagram tells me that these things are called the uh, lacrimal bones, so I'm just trying to get those as accurate as I can. One area that I found really helped in getting a sort of a skull-like look was this area in the forehead, which the diagram tells me is called a glabella. It's quite a sort of a, not exactly circular, but rounded section. And something that I tended to do was to sort of try and do the um, eye sockets as one piece, where actually if you look at it, the uh, glabella sort of comes down um, to the sort of corner of the eye sockets. So they end up being quite rounded rather than having a sharp edge. Something I hadn't previously noticed on skulls as well is these holes in the cheekbones. Um, the diagram I've got tells me that these are called a foramen, which having had a quick Google seems to be uh, an opening in a bone where a nerve or a muscle can come through. But they're quite distinctive so I'm making sure to put those in. I'm sticking some blobs of clay in place here for the teeth, but um, I think straight away you can see these are way, way too big, so I'm going to have to sculpt these down slightly. In actual fact, this was something that happened with my previous zombie sculpture. I got to a certain point where I had some teeth in, and it wasn't really looking quite right. And, uh, after a while, I realised that the teeth were just way, way too big and out of proportion to the main head. Once I sized them down a bit, it started looking a little bit more realistic. I find my loop tool is very useful here, so this is just a piece of guitar string uh, which I've soldered into a piece of brass tube uh, and obviously attached that to a wooden handle, but I mean this is one of my go-to tools, I find myself using this for everything. So as I mentioned, I have been building quite a lot of mechs recently and I still haven't quite got rid of that bug, so I do want to go back and build some more robots. But I'm also really enjoying doing the sculpture, so I'm thinking, I wonder if there's a way of combining the two. So maybe having some hard edge modelling with some sculpted elements in there. Uh, might be something I'd try for the next project, perhaps. Having worked on this for a while, I've suddenly realised I've got the nose a little bit too far down. So the sort of lower ridges I'm cutting off right now um, were just placed slightly too far down the face. At least on the skull I've got, they're more um, in line with the eye sockets rather than being below them. So I'm just trying to reposition some of this and get that a little bit more accurate. The 
this particular part of the skull has some particularly flowing organic shapes so hopefully you can see down underneath the nostrils I've tried to get a nice um, curve to that piece as so if you look on the original skull here you can see the shapes sort of flow into each other in quite an organic way so I'm just obviously trying to replicate that in the sculpture too. I was interested to try and experiment a little further with different sort of shapes of skulls, maybe accentuating certain other parts of it. So for example, on this one here, a smaller scalar version, I've taken the nasal bone and the upper jaw and it sort of extended those out a little bit further. And actually I think that kind of looks kind of cool. Um, I don't know if that's sort of getting towards what a monkey skull might be, but um, you know, it's sort of in that region. But I quite like the, uh, the prominent sort of nasal bone sticking out there. So I think that's kind of, kind of a cool idea, even if that isn't perhaps anatomically correct it sort of makes it look quite scully if you know what I mean so I was quite pleased with how that one came out So the final stage of this is actually trying to get a nice finish to the sculpture. Now one thing I do find a little bit tough sometimes is to actually smooth out the final look of the piece. One thing I've always um, used is white spirits and what I've done is to apply some of that to the sculpture and then smooth it down with a paintbrush. The um, white spirit, because it's a thinner, uh, melts the surface of the clay a little bit and the paintbrush just allows you to smooth it all down. Now that, that works well enough but you can sometimes get sort of brush strokes visible in the clay. So for this one what I thought what I would do is give it a bit of a blast with a blowtorch and um, so the idea being that that will uh, melt the surface of the skull a little bit and help smooth out some of the shapes. I found that this can make things look a little bit more organic and a little bit more natural so um, I think in this case it's quite a nice way to uh, get a bit more of a smooth finish to the piece. As with my other sculpture, I am sort of thinking of maybe uh, doing a bit of cold casting with this and doing some brass or maybe aluminium versions. So having a slightly smoother finish than the real skull I think will work for this. Anyway, I think that's it for this video. Um, I hope this is useful in some way if you're thinking of having to go to some sculpture yourself. Uh, but for the meantime, I think that's it. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.